Hello, this is Spidey1958, and welcome to a mod spotlight of Ancient Warfare 2, Part 1. I'm going to do this in two parts. The first one's going to basically cover the NPCs and the research and the production system. And then the second one will actually cover troops and uh, siege equipment and stuff like that. So, this is one of the castles that can spawn in. I spawned it in without uh, NPCs in it. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is the research book. You should always make that first. And it's made the, with two gold, three paper, and four uh, leather. And when you right click on it the first time, it will become yours. And then you can start researching it. Um, if we go over here to the research table, these are all things I can research currently. And that. So, say we want to research ballistics one, we can uh, tell it that. Go here, craft, and tell us what we need. So, we'll need a torch. ink, paper, and string. And we can put these in here. They don't actually have to go into the spots they're in as long as they're in there. And then you would do start. And it would take 59 seconds to research, but we don't want to research that long. So we, it only if we stop and go back, it will restart where we were. But another option we have is we can build an NPC. So if we go over to the NPC bench here and say we want to recruit an expert researcher. So for that, we'll need three paper, eight rations, and a master quill. So the build a master quill. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start out with these benches here. The, you will need to build six, seven of these to do research, and the other one is a crafting bench to let your craftsman craft. So let's go through the first one. This is probably the first one you're going to build. It's the research bench. And let's go ahead. Okay. This is the research station. Uh, use it to do research. This is the engineering station. Use it to build your farms and various what they call civics. This is the drafting station. This is where you basically tell it to uh, build buildings or set up the uh, plans to build buildings. This is the vehicle engineering station, which we won't be using in this one, but this is where you build most of your siege engines and that. This is the ammo production station. You use it to build your uh, various ammos for your siege engine. This is your NPC recruiting center. It's where you recruit NPCs. This is your alchemy center, which will won't get in this episode, but is where you do reinforced building materials. So I've already showed you how you research. And so the next thing we need is an advanced quill. So to craft an advanced quill, we need gold, stick, and feather. Well, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and get a stick, a feather, and gold. Okay, so if we go in this one and put in our gold, our stick, 
in a feather. And this other stuff in here, it will ignore, so you can leave it in there. And boom, we have our advanced quill. So if we go over here to our recruiting station, we put our advanced quill in. I've already got food and paper in there. So we can start our, oh, we're missing something. Oh, I needed a master craft quill, not an advanced quill. So let's go back here. Stop this production. Go to this is basically our civics. This is primarily farms, but it's also where we would build like our town hall and our warehouse civics. And I will show you all those later. And this is where we'd build other stuff like gates and uh, vehicle engineering stations. We build our NPC recruiting center here. Basically, you don't use the normal production. You basically have to build these benches. So we wanted a master quill. Which takes a diamond, a stick, and a... So say a lot of these, they use the same basics. So diamond... Stick... And feather. And that makes our master quill. And we can stop that. I made books for you. You have to have a book in here. And uh, if you make a new book, it has everything you've already learned in it. So one of the tricks I've found is just make a book for each station and leave the book in there. So, okay, let's try this again. So we want an expert researcher. And we start crafting. And we have our researcher. Now if we put him down in here, where you put him down is their home space, which means that's where they go when they're uh, ready to go. And this station will broadcast that there's research work to do, and he will go there and advance the research without you having to sit there and wait. Um, almost all stations have that. Uh, for the crafting ones, you need a crafter. And all of them come in three levels depending on your technology level. So basically you've got your your uh, commanders, which you are lieutenant and generals, which we won't cover here, colonels and generals. You have your novice, adept, and master fishermen, your craftsmen, your miners, your farmers, your lumberjacks, your couriers, which carry things around, your researchers, and then there are bandits and bandit archers. And you also have, you can summon, you can recruit the villagers from the normal Minecraft villagers, which are really expensive and cost emeralds. You have your footmen and your archers and your siege engineers and your medics. They're all recruited via this table with various um, recipes. And that um, I'm not going to cover recipes much in here because most of them are unique to the table and based on research. So let's go ahead and get a craftsman. Craftsman, where are you? There you are. There's our expert craftsman. So if I tell this to recruit, I wonder how that acts again in there. Oh, let's put in a bunch of, well, let's put in masters. Now 
Now, if I go out, I don't know if he works on that table or not. Obviously not. But if I go over to this table, which is the crafting table, and let's get some wood. Say I put a bunch of wood. I click there. Tell the recipe put wood in here. And he should go over and start crafting, but apparently he's not liking that. Oh well. They sometimes do that, and we won't worry about that. This is a trash can. You can craft this, basically. If I want to get rid of some of my junk here, I can just go ahead and throw the stuff in here. And it will slowly get rid of it. If I apply a redstone signal. Um, your troops need to eat rations. Um, you can use any food you want, but I suggest converting your food to normal rations, which are found in here, food rations, which restore one hunger and two upkeep value for these. So if you put any food in here, let's say we get some steak, and we throw them in there, then turn on this so it gets a redstone signal. It will convert those to food rations. For every day of food the steak creates, it will create one ration. So I think one steak will create like three rations. So it will fill up here, and it keeps track of how many it ate. And let me stop the rain. And sound level should be low enough. Let's tweak those down just a little bit more. Okay. So you'll see here that those 64 stakes, since stakes create three day give you uh, three hunger, three hunger symbols. It creates. Oh, well, they must do four hunger symbols. And just makes it easier. Then you can have standardized your rations and just put them in here. This is the large town hall. There are three sizes. The lounge large town hall basically comes with three uh, lines of nine. The medium comes with two and the small comes with one. And you can also go here and get a, a uh, NPC list of all the mob NPCs you have in play, which you can see I have way too many. And that this is a chunk loader. It basically, you can tell it what chunks to force around it. This is the deluxe chunk, chunk loader. And you can set individual chunks around you to force them to be loaded. And over here, this has no interface, but this is the single chunk chunk loader. Loads one chunk, and those are both built into the mod. Let's go ahead and make a day. And let's go build a civic. So say I want to build a new tree farm. We go in here, and let's build an oak tree farm. Go in there. And we tell it to start crafting. And if we walk away, it's not going to craft. It will just stay where it was. So go ahead and build a tree farm. Okay, 
and say we want to place down our tree farm out here. Um, if you left click, it will um, start the boundary. If you shift left click, it will start the boundary at the top of the queue. And you usually want to have it be at least one level up. So we do that and we get a purple. Tree farms can be 16 by 16. If you'll notice over in the left corner, tells me what the size is. So I can run around here until I get to the max size. Which is 1616. And then I usually shift left click again to set it. And then you just need to set this down anywhere along the boundary, like there. That creates our uh, farming area. Now, if I put saplings in here, of the right type, they will start planting the trees. Now, I don't know what special resources are, but you will notice here it says sides, top, and bottom. That's both for build pipes and for couriers, which I will show you in a little bit. So that's basically a tree farm. And I have set up almost all the basic farms here, so we'll go through them here quickly. This is the grain farm. Now, farms have to meet the rules of the grain normally, so you're going to want to put a water block in the middle there. Otherwise, the ground will keep changing back. This is a carrot farm and a potato farm. This is a watermelon farm. Now, watermelons, if you put the seeds in here, it will plant every single square with a watermelon plant, which means there'll be no room for the actual watermelons. And why is there a pumpkin in here? I must have put pumpkin seeds in mistake. So this is the way I plant them so that they'll be able to grow. Any that grow outside of the box won't be harvested. So that's another thing. Here's a better example of how to set it up because it hasn't grown as much. That's a pumpkin farm. You have to have sand down there for your uh, cactus farm and it's going to leave them at too high. It's basically harvest whenever they get three high. And it does the same here for the uh, sugar cane. And again you have to have the water just like the normal rules. This one here is a mushroom farm which of course has to have can't have sunlight so I built a wooden thing over it and I don't know what that big noise I just heard was. And again, this is a normal mushroom farm. You can see we got mushrooms planted in there. Mushrooms grow really slow, so. And here we have another wart farm, which you basically place down soul sand and let it grow. And this is a small town hall, like I showed you. You can have multiple town halls. The, N the NPCs will use whichever one was closest to them when you spawn them. Also, when you spawn them, that becomes their home site. So they will always go back there at night. So you want to spawn them someplace safe if you're not playing on peaceful. This is a pig farm. You basically feed some carrots, keeps a certain number in there, and basically the rest of them in harvests. Same thing here, cow farm, you get leather, raw beef, you put wheat in and it breeds more cows. This is a chicken farm. It collects both the eggs, the chicken, and the feathers and breeds more chickens if you put in seeds. It will always keep a minimum number of adult chickens. This is the sheep farm. It will breed up to a certain number of sheep, which I think is six and then it won't breed any more sheep. It will just keep harvesting them for wool and the wool will go in here and it will harvest the different colors. This is a mushu farm. Basically they'll breed mushus and again you only get raw pork and uh, leather. They don't actually harvest the uh, mushrooms. This is a fishing farm. 
which I recommend is one of the best sources of food because once you build it and the guy, it doesn't take any resources, no seeds, nothing like that, and it will just get raw fish for you. Now, you have to have the water at the level right below the level that you placed it. So since this is here, the water has to be at that level. Over here, we have the other thing fishermen can do, and that's gather ink sacs for you. So they will do that automatically. Another one you can build is the warehouse, which can be up to 9 by 9 by 3, which is the max size here. And then you can put in things that basically increase the warehouse. Now, you have to have aisles between them. The most they can be is a 4x4 four four, up to 3 tall. And these are the biggest type of warehouse. There's actually three sizes that cost different amounts to make. So you have your small warehouse, your medium warehouse, and your large warehouse. And basically it adds either 9 18 or 27 stacks and the way it works is with the number I have in here I can put 1728 stacks of material in here and I have 101 used so I think it's about not quite 4000 you can get if you get the max size of the warehouse and let's we've seen tree farms So you have tree farms for each of the types. They pretty much work the same way. And let me show you something else over here. This supports buildcraft. So I actually have a buildcraft engine here with a mechanical worker hooked up, which will basically run the tree farm without labor coming to it. Basically, I every, I think it's 80 jewels, Minecraft jewels, will give you one work unit for here. So, so you can use Buildcraft Energy to run these as well as the people. And this one is a cocoa farm, which I didn't make tall enough. So the taller you make it, the more the higher up the trees they'll get with cocoa. Since I only made it one high, the cocoa is only one high. And let's turn off the rain again and make it morning. But it will automatically cook and harvest uh, the cocoa. You have to plant the trees yourself, which I did manually. Okay. Next, over here, you have two types of mines you can build. The, the biggest mine is the quarry mine, which is basically a huge pit, just like the normal Minecraft quarries. You can have it up to 64 by 64. And you can run it with engines, and you can have your miners come and run it. Uh, it basically will, has a slot for inventory here, and it requires ladders. You can also set up, and I don't see them here. I will show you couriers later. I don't know where my courier went. They sometimes get lost, and he has a long way to run. The other type of mine you can build is the classic mine, which can be up to 16 by 16. It only creates a small hole like this, and then it puts ladders in it. So if we get up, it basically strip mines down like this, creating subshafts and goes down to level 10. It does not go down the bedrock, it only goes down to level 10, at least in my experience. Okay, I think that's the basic building things. Another thing I want to show, oh, there's our, our guy. How do they keep getting in there? Their pathing is a little strange, so you want to keep it not too complicated. Okay, this is a buildcraft engine that's actually powered by your NPCs. Any of the NPCs that do working can come up and power it and it will base whoops it will basically create build graph powers I think every work unit generates 80 joules same as before and you can see there that it's running this mine 
Okay, the next thing to show you here is the mailboxes. There are two types of mailboxes. You basically have your uh, personal and your uh, industrial. The personal, you can basically have, use the six sides, pipe stuff into it, and depending on where you pipe it in, will determine where it goes. So you can click on here and select all the mailboxes that are available. But if I throw the sapling in here to this one that's marked main base, or if I pumped it in through the front, it will actually ultimately show up over here. See? And the same if I, this one is personal, if I put it in here, it will show up in this one. Well, ultimately it will. There it is. So it's sort of like a uh, ender chest, though it's a lot slower than that. But you can use it to send resources between bases and stuff like that. I think that covers most of the basic devices and NPCs. I know this is rather rushed, and uh, hopefully it made some sense to you. Let me know if you have in the comments if you have any specific questions or that. And you, like I said, you can use build craft pipes to build in, and that's why you use the same size. Oh, I, let me show you the courier. I haven't showed you the courier. So the the secret to the courier is first of all you have to get a routing slip. So we have a routing slip here. So we left click on let's say the front of this and we'll say pick up from the north from the north side and if we put some food in there steak get some more steak throw it in there take some of these and if we right click this we can tell it to pick up any of or exact amounts if we wanted to pick up an exact amount or fill to a certain level if we're filling to a certain level can pick up all but that all but exactly something and any of so we want to pick up any food rations then we're going to go over here and click on the top here and tell it to deposit any of rations to up. Then if we go ahead and get ourselves a courier, assuming I spell it right, and there are three levels of courier, let's get the highest here. So if you shift right click on the courier, you'll bring up his inventory. Basically, it's the normal thing. The 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 novice has one row of equipment and can carry one uh order one of the uh, routing slips. The uh adept has two rows of inventory and carry two, and the expert has three rows of inventory and carry actually four of these. So if we put this in here and then right click on him so he's no longer following us, he should go over to here, which he didn't, and then he should go over there to drop off. So I may have him picking up from the wrong side. That is the tricky part. It doesn't always, I don't always get right what side you have to click on. But you can click here. Let's try having them take from the bottom. See if that works. Yep, that looks like that worked that time. Yep. So he picked up durations. Went over here and put them in here. At least I think he put them in there. 
Let's see if he's actually putting them in there. Yep, looks like it. Yep, because they're not in his inventory. And that's basically couriers. You can get much more complicated. You could actually have him an advanced one. You could using advanced routing slips. You could actually have him do uh, what 16, 32 different things. Now, in my Let's Play, I do some complicated ones where I have him put coal and feed stuff in, and I have couriers running all over the place. But that should give you a basics of it. The next one. Oh, there's still one more thing. One more thing I wanted to show you in this one. And that's buildings. Now, there are a bunch of extra ones in here that aren't in the normal because I was playing with it. But let's get a village house. So we get a village house. And it says that we need some stuff. So let's go ahead and we need two things of cobble. thing of oak whoops some wood let's see we need glass panes and wood stairs wood stairs there's our glass panes. And I'm just putting whole stacks in because I'm being lazy. And then we need one stone stair. One door and one torch. Okay, then we will start, and this is going to take a minute and 32, so I'll be back as soon as it's done. Okay, I'm back. It's almost done here. And there we have our building. So if we take this out, and when you're building them in creative mode, you can place them down however you want, and there's a whole creative mode uh, tool set. But let's run over here to the village. But uh, yeah, in creative mode, you can, it will replace terrain and do stuff like that. But in normal mode, you can't do that. So if we put it down, you'll see a purple outline of how big it is. So if you shift click it, it will put it down, but it won't build until miners come by and basically work with it. So he should come down here and start building it. And it will start building. And let's see, I haven't checked. It also adds to villages, this building here, the log cabin. which is basically got a little carpet. It's it's basically a really nice village building. Except I don't I assume these are white quartz stairs. And it's a cauldron and it's got an actual little bedroom. So it's a really nice little house. So if you find a, it in a village, it makes a nice starter house for you. There are other spawn things that I will show in the next episode. But at this point, I think we'll go ahead and call it an episode. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, I know this is disjointed. There was so much to cover. I really should have had a better plan. So I'm sure there will be questions. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And next time, we'll cover spawns, soldiers, siege engines and uh, get into that stuff so as always if you enjoyed this go ahead and leave me a like or a comment 
And if you didn't like it, leave me a dislike's fine, but please leave a comment saying what you dislike. As always, this is Spidey1958, and have fun Minecrafting.